What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC. I'm Ken, and today we've got this. This is the new FureTech Grasshopper frame for the Traxxas TRX4M. Um, it's carbon fiber, obviously. Uh, this concept, the Grasshopper frame, has been used on multiple other platforms, the SCX and the FCX. So this is FureTech's new addition to that Grasshopper line. Um, it's pretty sweet. It's got the bumper mounts and uh, body clip mounts, so you can use your same body, which is awesome, because that's probably one of the better parts of this Traxxas rig, to be honest. Um, just kidding. We love you, Traxxas. No, the body clips are awesome, though. Um, so we definitely want to keep those, and so the frame lets you do that, which is sweet. All these extra shock mounting positions are also awesome. Um, kind of almost wish this let us go a little further. I guess we can drop it all the way down to here. It's kind of weird that there's not a couple extra spots in there or that this wasn't solid right here. We'll have to look when we get it together. But just my initial thoughts on it, I would like to mount the shock right right there. That's where I want to mount it. Like, right up in here, more than likely. We'll see. We'll see how much angle we can get. Again, these are not... I wouldn't say this is necessarily built for a total comp crawler, this rig. Um, this chassis, though, if, if you're laying your shocks down this far, you're definitely not just trailing, right? You're doing some rock crawling. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes and how much adjustability we have. But so far, just from the looks of it, looks like it's going to be awesome. Got a tray, got a start side brace, some nice big hardware here. Let's get it installed. So first things first, actually, we're going to go ahead and zero this guy out and get our weight. So here's our chassis rails. We're at 11 and a half, basically, plus our ESC tray and brace. Oh, let's get back here. That gets us at 15.36, and then we're going to do our hardware here because that is also part of the chassis. And that's going to bring us to a 17, yeah, 17, 17.78, 1778. Um, and then when we get the other stock chassis off, we'll go ahead and uh, weigh that as well. And you'll see the difference then. So this should be pretty easy. The first task is obviously getting everything off this chassis. And it's going to be just these screws here, your bumpers, your trays, the two shock mount points, those three right there. That should be all it takes. And then our ESC actually looks like that's part of, yeah, we'll have to pop our ESC out. And I think we have to use, we're, we're not using the stock ESC tray because if you notice this chassis, it tapers in, right? So about here and then it tapers in. And so I think the ESC tray is gonna be too narrow because this chassis is a straight chassis. So it's gonna end up like this. And then we're gonna have to use this guy. Well, it goes this way. We have to use this guy for our ESC tray. So you're not reusing the stock ESC tray, so you have to pull that out as well. But it should be pretty easy here. Let's go ahead and get at it. Now we're gonna go ahead and just, we don't have to actually pull these out, but we're gonna loosen them so that we can separate our frame rails a little. All right, that gives us a little bit of leeway there so we can make sure we get our skid plate out. That should help us. Let's go do the front. So you do have to completely pull one side out at least because of your servo and the wiring. So just go ahead and pull one side, one rail completely off, uh, at least on the front. And that'll get you out of, get you the ability to get it out of here. Yeah, you can pull the whole thing apart. We're just trying to keep it together because we wanted to, uh, 
to weigh it out. So I didn't want to have to put it all back together. Anyway, that's what you end up with. There's the guts. Okay. We'll set that right there for now. And let's go ahead and get our screws back in here. So we're essentially replacing this guy here, right? All this. Oh, and then the, where did it go? Oh, it's right there. I was going to say the uh, ESC tray. This is our ESC tray. So pretty simple. All right, let's go ahead and weigh this guy. Bam. Look at that difference. That is 40.78 grams. So almost 41 grams um, you're eliminating by getting rid of this this deal here and you're gaining a ton of shock mounting positions right so essentially this guy is going like this and that's the profile difference pretty cool I definitely dig it you're getting you're getting all this I don't know why, why we have forward mounting positions to be honest I guess if you extend your front links and move your axles forward quite a bit then you're gonna have uh, you're gonna want these positions here but realistically you pretty much just want to be able to move them back, at least with the stock shocks, right? Or the stock length. You're going to want to go back and, and lower it, right? So we have the upper mounting position, so you can lower the whole truck if you want a little bit. But you're going to want to mount in this area here. And if you want to get real extreme, you've got this here. Same here. They could have put a, mount, uh, a mounting position right there, maybe, right underneath. You just don't want to weaken the frame rails too much, but you could always put a hole here and then get crazy angle if you wanted um, to, like, maximize your articulation. Not that that's ideal, uh, but I feel like this is kind of the sweet spot, right? Kind of like a 45. So I kind of want a mountain here. So that's unfortunate, but we'll see. We'll see where, where we're at when we're there. So the first thing we're going to do is just put our, our front bumper back on. Remember, you use these smaller screws here. They're the only ones that will really fit through the, the hole anyway. So And then we'll do our center our skid plate and the reason we did it like this is because it allows us to keep all of our wires tied up we don't have to cut any wires or uh, cut any uh, zip ties on our wires the hardest part here is going to be trying to uh, line up the link and get our link in there but shouldn't be too bad small little side screws that go right here basically just a extra skid plate screw to help reinforce it so it's not just held on by the link connections all right and get out of here ESC we're gonna tuck you down get in the battery tray for now all right so that's pretty simple Again, we just started with the front bumper and then we do the skid plate and then we're going to do um, the rear bumper as well but before we do that we're probably going to do the other rail and we make sure our drive shaft is in also make sure your uh, drive shaft is in phase if you've never put your drive shaft in phase it's basically it's hard to see with the Traxxas drive shafts um, but essentially you can tell by where the screw is that's kind of the where the u-joint is here like this it doesn't matter quite as much on these but you still kind of want to be in phase so if you have the screws facing the same direction then that's going to have your drive shaft in phase if your drive shafts not in phase then uh, you can at high speeds get some wobbling in your drive shaft or vibration so just try to look in your drive shaft and make sure that it's completely in phase here I'll show you on a exposed drive shaft so essentially you've got your ears here on this type of a drive shaft right and your you joint can bend like this well you want the opposite end to be the same so your ears are on the same side right if you go like this and your ears are opposite of each other right essentially like that 
and that can create vibration. So you want to make sure your ears are facing the same direction. Okay, and that usually correlates with the screw holes as well. So as long as your screws on the ends are facing the same direction, you should be good. So we're gonna get our inside drive shaft facing a direction that we know is up, essentially. You can kind of see down in there where the pin is, right? It's hard to see, I know, but get your pin so that you know your pin is there we go, we're vertical now, right? The pin is up and down. And then we make sure that this drive shaft's pin is also up and down when we put it in. So like this. And then we should be good. And now we'll do the other side. And there we go, now we just got to mount our shocks. Uh, we've got our original shock screws as well as these, and they are a tad longer, and they're countersunks versus, uh, I guess, button heads. And uh, the leftover two screws, these are from our ESC. These are uh, the neural you know, caps, cap heads. So those ones go there. All the other regular button heads are what you use here. And um, yeah, let's get our shocks mounted up now. Alrighty guys, so now we're doing the shocks and I just want to kind of show you guys where the different positions are and some of the issues that you might run into. So these top rows are fantastic if you want to lower the truck, right? The problem is you need some spacers, right? As you go in, your shock will hit on the rail. So you'll definitely want to get some spacers so that your shock doesn't sit on the rail. Um, you can see right there, you need a couple millimeters, let's see. Yeah, you want a good mm, two and a half to three millimeters worth of. Uh, no, let's see, a little, a little much there. Hold on. Yeah, three millimeters should be enough. That's three. Yeah, yeah. So you want about three millimeters worth of. Uh, spacing in there if you're going to use the top row. Also, the same goes for this bottom most and for this back. You're also going to hit, so you'll need a little bit there. Uh, the second hole here, let's see. That guy also hits. Your third hole is where you'll be most uh, clear of things. So you'll definitely want to use the third hole. I'm curious why this dip is here. Why did they design this with the dip? versus just having it be a full arch, kind of like this. I wonder if the body hits in some way. Let's look. Mm. Yeah, the body is close. Can see in there? Let's get some better light. So the body's close, but it's not so close that they had to have that. So I'm curious why that's there. Maybe they can do an updated version without that and give us better shock mounting positions. Uh, Cause that's just kind of odd to me. There's plenty of clearance actually. Yeah, they could have, uh, we still have to put our cross brace in, which is something we have not done yet, which goes right across here, but they could have easily mounted that right here, right? Like, I guess it depends on the size of the motor you have, but the stock motor, you could have mounted it here. And if you're gonna have a, a much bigger motor at all, if it's any longer, you'll have to move this anyway, because it's right where the motor sits. So I think this would have been even more ideal and then having this just continue. Again, I don't know why this dip is here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if you know, comment below in the comments below. Why do you think they designed it this way? Maybe we'll reach out and ask, but um, I definitely would prefer something like this on this side as well so that we can get our shocks in there because coming all the way back to here is a little too far, right? That's that's pretty far. Although not, not too bad, I guess, but I think the sweet spot, at least with the stock setup, the sweet spot would have been like right 
there, <laughs> right, right where we're missing a spot to mount, right? That would have been kind of the sweet spot angle because then your, your angles match at the extremes, uh, maybe even right here. So either way, um, I just hate that we have to mount it right here without, that's the best, that's the furthest back you can mount it and highest up without spacers, right? If you go any further back, now you have to use spacers, which does change the angle of the shocks, which isn't that big of a deal. It's only three millimeters, but um, it's not ideal. You want to keep the shocks as, you know, vertical as possible to the axle mounting. So we really want it right here. And if, again, if this wasn't dipped right here, then you wouldn't need spacers on any of the bottom rows throughout any of this right here. You wouldn't need any spacers anywhere along the whole bottom row. So that kind of kind of disappointing there. But again, this is their first chassis for this guy. They, they're the first ones to come out with a new chassis, so that's huge. Um, it gives us something other than the stock, which is awesome. I mean, it is way better than stock. Uh, I definitely recommend it. I just, maybe on a V2 or maybe on a higher performance version, uh, they can give us just a little bit better design there. Again, I just don't know why that's there. Be nice to know. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and mount our shocks. I guess we'll put them here since we're running kind of the stock body and it's kind of heavy. And that's just, that's not much better angle than stock really. So that's unfortunate, but we're gonna go ahead and mount it here. And you know, maybe I'll see if I can find some spacers. We don't have any M 2.5 hardware. The Traxxas uses all M 2.5 hardware. The FCX 24 uses two millimeter and the SCX uses the 1.4s. So it's kind of sucks that all three platforms are totally different, but again, they're different companies, different sizes. So uh, the nice beefy hardware is nice, but uh, it just sucks that it's a totally different hardware kit. It would have been nice. I would, I would have preferred actually the two millimeter hardware on here. The 2.5, it's kind of unnecessary and large. I mean, it's, I've never even broken a screw on the 1.4s. Well, I mean, you broke them if they over tighten them, but like running a rig, I think I maybe have had one screw snap ever um, and none of the two millimeter screws at all. So the two millimeters, plenty beefy. 2.5 is just almost too much for the size, but it is what it is. I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, but I would just prefer the compatibility between the kits. Maybe that's why they went 2.5. It's Traxxas, you know, they just want to be different. So anyway, all right, let's get this in and we'll be back. So I ended up finding some M2.5 hardware in this tie rod kit that I had for another RC. And they've got some uh, lock washer or lock nuts in their nylon lock nuts. And so we're going to use that as a spacer for now. They're 3.5 millimeter and it gives you just, just enough clearance. Like I said, I think a three would probably be fine. Um, but now you can see the shocks kind of angle outward, which is not ideal, but it's not the worst. Um, one of the cool things about this chassis are the amount of space you get in here. Because again, the stock rails, look at this. Look how narrow they are. They fit inside, right? That's how narrow the stock rails were. So if you were having issues with your longer servo, say you upgraded to NSDRC or Reefs or OGRC or AG, AFGRC, any of those longer higher end uh, servos you probably were hitting your servo and rubbing on the chassis so especially when you get the shock towers in there right so now you've got tons of room tons of extra room like you're not going to hit the chassis at all so that is super so that alone is worth it right the extra shock positions and that 100 percent worth it plus the weight um you're saving a ton on weight Overall, I, I love the chassis. I think it's great. I think there are some room for improvements, just a little bit. Like I said, you can improve this. This section is kind of strange to me. Um, and really, really, that's it. That, that's really it. Uh, maybe include some spacers so that people can mount this upper side. You just need three millimeter spacers or washers and then people can mount up to the top or three and a half. Um, maybe do a little bit more testing, I'll put them up here and see what size works best so that your shock doesn't hit on the chassis itself. But yeah, three is probably fine, but include those with the kit. I think that'd be great. Um, maybe a version two that's a little bit more high performance or gives you more options. But again, first chassis out there for the TRX 4M and super light, way more space in here and much better shock mounting options. And you use the stock body mounts, right? You use the stock body mounts. Super easy to switch over too. Um, we still have to get our brace in here and our tray. Where our tray go? There it is, the little tray. So we're gonna have to loosen it back up and uh, put our tray in. We got a little overzealous wanting to get it together. So we're gonna do that and we'll be right back. Now, I don't know if we've got a prototype chassis because again, FearTech did send this out to us early, um, but there's a little bit of space here. You have to kind of pull the, the chassis rails in. Um, 
maybe it's supposed to be like that, but I just wanted to point that out in case yours came this way as well, that uh, if it comes that way in the final production, then I guess that's the way it is. But you do pull this in. It does give it extra support. These screws though are pretty tiny. I mean, they are tiny little Phillips heads. Um, so you can see right there, right? There's quite a bit of gap there, but we'll try it. Like I said, it might be because we got a prototype chassis. Um, it does seem to hold it just fine, but it does pull them in. So it's going to keep everything nice and tight, but you can see they bend inward just a little bit now. Um, that will help fix that shock issue when you put spacers on here. So that's, that's kind of good, I guess, but not on the back, right? Because the back doesn't do that. The back doesn't get pulled in like that. So I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll reach out to them and figure that out as well. Maybe we'll do an update video. Fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how much that gets pulled in. I actually want to measure that. Uh, we got our rear tray in for our ESC. Let's measure this guy. So frame rail to frame rail where it's pulling in from the outside of the frame rail. You're at 39. And then if we do the back here where the tray sits, we're at 43. So it's a four millimeter difference between the front and the rear uh, once you install this cross brace that pulls the chassis inward. So that's interesting. Um, I don't know if that's intentional or again, because we had a prototype. Um, I don't know if this is a prototype or a full production yet, but I, uh, I feel like it was a prototype because we got it pretty early. So anyway, now we've got to just put some double-sided sticky tape on here or Velcro, or you could use a strap or any method you want to try to, you know, mount your ESC down and uh, should be good to go. All right, ESC is all mounted. You can just see how much space you gain, right? You gain a ton of space in there, which is awesome if you're going to do aftermarket electronics or you want to change up some stuff. Um, having that extra space is just huge. That combined with the fact that you're saving like 23 grams almost on weight and it's on above, you know, it's sprung weight. You want to reduce the amount of sprung weight as much as possible. You want uh, all the weight generally on crawlers to be on your axles as low as possible um, and ideally non-rotating mass, right? So like your knuckles, the outer part of your, your axles, that's where you really want your weight. Um, you know, you can always put weight on your diff covers and your axles themselves. Um, but realistically, you don't want rotating mass to be heavy but that's the most common way to do it. So it's not a, not a huge deal, but even that, even the rotating mass, like on your wheels or wheel weights or hex weights, stuff like that, that is better than anything that's above the shocks, right? You don't want your links to be heavy. You don't want your slider to be heavy, your skid plate, your, your chassis rails, anything. The higher you get, the less you want the thing to weigh. So um, pretty awesome that you're lowering quite a bit of weight on the chassis. And I'll say it one more time because it's awesome. The fact that you can use your stock body mounts is pretty sweet. I've seen some people use these mounts on like Lexan bodies or just mounting them to other bodies. So clearly these are, are you know, very good mounts that people like. So, I mean, I really like the body mount system here. You just snap it on and snap it off. Pretty sweet. All right. So here's how she's sitting right now with our adjustments. I dig it. Might want to angle our shocks back up in the rear just a little, just a little bit. Or add some spacers or get some stiffer springs. Um, it sits kind of low. Again, we're angled more in the back than we are in the front because the front, that's as far as we could go. Ideally, I'd rather angle the, the fronts back some more um, and that would drop the front down just a little bit, but we can't do that. So we'll have to do something with the back here. But let's look at articulation. The lights, man, the lights will be good from the back. There you go. That's pretty good. That's a good amount of articulation there. And it's not always about articulation. It's not about having tons of travel. Um, really, sometimes that, that will hurt you, especially on like side hilling your body. You have a lot more body roll, stuff like that. So there, there is kind of a limit. You know, it looks cool, right? And there's people out there, other YouTubers that like, they pride themselves on, look at how much I can twist my chassis. Um, but really that that stuff kind of just holds you back on extreme on, on real com competition type crawling right unless your rig is really built for it i mean you're talking full low cg um, performance over everything type chassis we like to call that a poe 
uh, in one of the groups that were in a PoE type build, performance over everything. That, and that means you're basically you're not running a body, right? You're you're it's literally as extreme as you can get. All you care about is performance. Then those kind of rigs, they can handle extreme articulation a little bit better. But when you start having heavier hard bodies and stuff like that, you don't want crazy articulation because again, it'll just cause your side hilling to be horrible, horrible. It'll just roll and you have to widen it up even more and it just you don't want to do that. So not that getting wider is bad because we like low and wide for sure. Um, but again, it's all a balance, right? And it's personal preference. If you like the way articulation looks and getting that max flex looks cool to you and that's all you care about, then do it. I'm all about it. We've got some rigs that are like that. You know, I'm totally, totally get it. It's it's kind of like camber and stance, right? Like that's not a performance increase when your, your stance and camber is sitting like that on your Honda, right? It doesn't help performance wise. It, in fact, it makes your car way more dangerous and w way less stable. And it's just, it's not good for performance, but it looks cool, right? It looks low and mean and aggressive. That's kind of how we want this. Maybe we'll pull the springs out. I just want to sit like that. Bam. Anyway. All right, guys. We have a ton more upgrades coming. In fact, just yesterday, we got this stuff. <laughs> a bunch of stuff. Oh, sorry, we're shaking the camera. A bunch of stuff. We got to install it. A bunch of stuff from Muse or Mias. Uh, transmission housing and skid plates and shocks and this is some more lighting kits. Other random stuff for some other builds, but most of this stuff is for the for the TRX 4M here. So we'll be checking that out. This stuff is cool. Some scale accessories, exhaust and um, mud flaps and stuff. Look at these little guys. Yeah. All right. So we'll check this stuff out in another video. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. That way you know when all these uh, videos come. And comment down below. Why don't you comment down below, Young Grasshopper, because that's what this chassis is. Put Young Grasshopper down in the, the comments below. Let me know you watched the whole video. And uh, yeah, guys, have fun, build something, do something awesome, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, fun.